Hey, Joel. I'm so excited for you to visit our church. Uh, and, you know, there, there's a lot of people who have heard about you, and there's also a lot of people who have maybe not heard about you. Tell, tell us a little bit about your story, who you are. Yeah, and, yeah. So yeah. my name's Joel. Um, I actually was born and raised, like, right here in the Chicagoland area. Whoa. I, know, I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I uh, went to high school in Naperville, uh, right. graduated from Eagle Valley High School. But before I did that, I actually lived in India. So I was mm-hmm. born here in the Chicagoland area, but my parents sent me to live in India for two and a half years. And so yeah. my first introduction to culture and language uh, was actually in India. And my grandparents are missionaries in India. So um, honestly, Mario, like all I could ever remember, like my first memories are of my grandfather sharing the gospel to um, groups of people called the untouchables. And so the story of Jesus has kind of always been around me. Yep. And so uh, moving here to the U.S., uh, in in your book, so The Hidden Peace, you just wrote this book, uh, which congratulations on that. Thank you. And I got the chance to listen to it on Audible. So you heard uh, my voice. I heard your voice (laughs) in my ears and in in the car and driving places with my wife. So she got to hear it too. But you you talk a little bit about... um, this first traumatic experience uh, mm-hmm. in school. Yeah. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about that when you yeah. were in school. Um, so my first language I learned was actually Telugu, one of the major dialects okay. in India. Um, I had a little bit of receptive understanding, actually a lot of receptive understanding of English, but couldn't speak English mm-hmm. very well. And so, uh, you know, I basically come to my first day of class and um, the teacher asked this question, like, hey, does anybody have any pets? Um, and I'm like, I knew what the question was and I had like my vocabulary of like five words. So I raised my hand, I was like, dog. Um, Uh, And I'm like, I feel good about myself. Like, I'm like, I've crushed this question. Things are going to go well. And then she asked a follow-up question. Mario, to this day, I do not like follow-up questions. (laughs) So she was like, oh, what kind of dog do you have? And I was like, uh, dog. And now at this point, the kids are murmuring. The teacher's Uh. like, and I don't know what the teacher thought. She thought, maybe if I talk slower, it's going to help, right? Uh. It's not going to help. So she goes, no, 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 sweetheart. What? kind oh. of dog do you, you know, and I'm like, man, my face, if my face could turn red, it was probably bright <laughs> red. Um, and then finally I was just like, dog, and everybody er- erupts in laughter. Oh. The teacher's laughing, the kids are laughing. I think the little hamster in the corner that watched all of us come into the class, they're laughing. Um, and for me, this was the first time probably in my life where I could look back and just be like, like, okay, this was a type of hurt that isn't just you scraped your knee on a playground, it's actually a soul kind yeah. of hurt. Yeah. Um, and it kind of ran me into a trajectory where I was like, I will never let that be my story again. Mm. Like, I never want to walk into a room where I'm, like, taken off guard. I never want to be the dumbest person in a room. Like, mm. I will do whatever mm. it takes to have strength, power, control, intellect, um, because that was, like, painful. That was, like, that yeah. formative moment as a yeah. young kid. Yeah. So in your book, you talk about uh, this concept of, of humility. Yeah. You call it this ancient uh, characteristic or something yeah, like that. Yeah, ancient virtue. An ancient virtue yeah. of, of humility and, and, and how, we can, um, how we can access that. Talk a little bit about that, humility. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, that moment happens in my life. And, you know, you fast forward um, almost 40 years, you know, 40 years later. Um, okay. I've been able to do many years in Bible college, mm-hmm. seminary, earned a Ph.D. in biblical mm-hmm. theology. Mm-hmm. And you would think after making all... All those achievements and all that academic uh, kind of learning that it would ease that anxiety that's mm. in your heart mm. and at the end of it Mario you know what mm. I found I was more anxious mm. um, I was more concerned about what people thought about me mm. um, I was yeah. more stressed out yep. um, and what I found throughout the scriptures Matthew 11 28 and 29 was this like amazing call that Jesus has for us where he yeah. says hey let's do an exchange of yokes and yeah. in this exchange of yokes, you take my um, easy and relaxed yoke, and mm. um, and I'll take your heavy burdensome yoke. But mm. then he says this, um, come and follow me. Yeah. And the reason why we ought to follow Jesus is these two words he uses, then he combines them together and he says, for I am gentle mm. and humble. Come on. And the Greek word humble is tapianos, and in the ancient Greco-Roman world, that was not a, a word you would want to be associated with. Mm. And Jesus turns it completely upside down. And he shows us that the way of humility is, in fact, the way of Jesus. And, and, and humility, what it does is it actually helps us to see ourselves mm. rightly. Yep. Um, it helps us to see God as he truly is, mm. which then equips us yeah. to see other image bearers the way that we ought to see them yeah. and to um, live our lives and relationships in such a way that's congruent with what God wants in our yeah. lives. And that kind of living, man, that brings peace. Yeah. That brings tranquility. Yeah. The, the Hebrew word for it is shalom. Yeah. Um, it's a truly uh, well-ordered life. Mm. You also talk about weakness and weakness being uh, a gift. It's something that we often try to 
hide yeah. and try to uh, uh, cover up in some ways. Yeah. But you, you talk about it in, a, in almost exposing this and being like, this this is actually a gift. And yeah. So tell us just a little bit about that. Yeah, um, weakness. There's a, a, a brilliant theologian uh, of the past. His name is J.I. Packer. Um, and Packer has this tiny little book. And I remember reading it and just was absolutely mesmerized mm. with it. And it, just the title was Weakness is the Way. Oh. And if you think about our world, Man. our world is like power is the way. Yeah. Strength yeah. is the There's way. There's no way that you weakness know? could be the way, right? Like, yeah. What? Yeah. And then you think about the life of Jesus and it's like um, scholars call it the divine humility of Christ. Mm. That the high king of heaven would come low. And he would, in the incarnation, put on human flesh, that he would live the life um, that each of us have lived, and that he would, in humility, take himself to the cross, that he could defeat death through the cross. And so, uh, of all the things that Jesus could have given you and I in order to remember him, he gives us the breaking of the bread. He gives us the drinking of the juice. Like, like in these two symbols, we're reminded that weakness is not something to be despised. In fact, yep. weakness reminds us of our limits. Yep. And if we can be reminded of our limits, mm -hmm. then we can be prompted to look to the limitless one yep. who will meet yep. us in those yep. places. And so, yep. um, once again, it actually um, brings ease to an anxious heart yep. when we just address and acknowledge, I am who I am, yep. I'm not who yep. I'm not, and God is all um, um, that he is and gosh that gives me courage and confidence so good, wow so good man i enjoyed reading your book and uh thank you for sharing your story thank you for sharing your gift and um yeah i'm excited for sunday and yeah. and, and, and what uh our church gets to experience yeah. amazing yeah